Hi friends, hope you are fine. In the last video, we discussed about three types of cell surface receptors. In this video, let us understand receptor tyrosine kinase. At the end of this discussion, you will be able to understand the structure of RTK, why this receptor is called as RTK, and steps in RTK pathway. Let's dive into the detail. Why this receptor is called as receptor tyrosine kinases? So this is the receptor. It is having a lichen binding domain where the lichen binds. Then there is a transmembrane domain. You can see that is embedded on the plasma membrane. Then there is an intracellular domain where there is tyrosine kinase domain. So this RTK has intrinsic enzyme activity as tyrosine kinase domain. This receptor tyrosine kinase specifically phosphorylates these tyrosine residues on the receptor. That is why this receptor is called as tyrosine kinase receptor. There is a tyrosine kinase domain, then it phosphorylates tyrosine residues or tyrosine amino acids on the hydroxyl group. This is the monomer of receptor tyrosine kinase. A fully activated receptor is a dimer. Now let us see RTK pathway. So this is the monomer and this is the second receptor. Step 1 is ligand binding. Ligand binds to the receptor causing a conformational change on the receptor. Second step is dimerization. As a result, both of this receptor comes together and this tyrosine kinase domain is activated. And the third step is phosphorylation of this dimer. So this activated tyrosine kinase domain Phosphorylates the tyrosine residues that is on the receptor. Phosphorylation is simply addition of phosphate. ATP becomes ADP and this tyrosine kinases or kinase enzyme phosphorylates the hydroxyl group of tyrosine residues. That is why this receptor is called as tyrosine kinase receptor. And this is a fully activated receptor with phosphorylated tyrosine residues. Step 4 is activation of relay proteins. So this is a fully activated receptor upon ligand binding. So these are relay molecules in inactive state. So these relay proteins are phosphorylated by this tyrosine. This phosphorylation activates this inactive relay proteins and this molecule further activates or phosphorylates many other relay molecules or signaling molecules in a sequential manner, finally causing the activation of the target molecule that lead to change in gene expression that result in cellular response. This target molecule is often a transcription factor that can directly bind to the DNA and cause gene expression, thereby changing the cellular function or causing a cellular response like cell division, cell differentiation, cell growth, etc. So let me summarize this tyrosine kinase pathway. Step 1 is ligand binding. On binding of ligand, this receptor dimerizes. This monomer comes together, this tyrosine kinase domain becomes activated. And the third step is phosphorylation of this dimer. Tyrosine residues on the receptor is phosphorylated by the activity of this tyrosine kinase domain, thus forming a fully activated receptor. Step 4 is activation of relay proteins or signaling molecules. These relay proteins are phosphorylated by this tyrosine residues, this phosphate on tyrosine residues. Then this phosphorylated relay molecule further phosphorylates or activates many signaling molecules down the pathway leading to the activation of a target molecule which is often a transcription factor that causes activation of genes or causes gene expression leading to cellular response. Hope you understand tyrosine kinase receptor pathway. In the next video we will be discussing about G protein coupled receptor. Till then take care, stay blessed. Thank you so much for your support. Please consider subscribing our channel. Thank you.